top or share if I share PowerPoint does so I'm, I'm, I'm I don't know if this will go immediately into presentation mode or whether it's a bit silly let's have a look and then how does one how does one I'm recording so all my babbling and incompetence is being being immortalized forever I can stop recording there we go. Leon, no no it's all good it's all uncomfortable good. no 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 it's 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 my authentic self it's fine all right here we go okay so welcome welcome uh, oh look, we got more. We got more people. There, there we go. It's plus three. It's more. Excellent. Um, welcome, welcome to the welcome to the talk. Um, I am not Amy Kaepernick, <laughs> but Amy is. No, that would be me. <laughs> um, hi, my my name is Amy. Uh, so as the slide says, I'm a developer technologies MVP, which means I get put in the box of I do something else really cool, but I don't fit into any of the other categories. Uh, so I, I am a coder. Uh, I'm a typically front end developer, all, although uh, most of this project was not front end development. I am a conference addict, um, which means I'm kind of struggling right now because online events are, are not the same thing. Uh, and I'm heavily involved in a heap of community groups. Um, in fact, even this week, I'm helping uh, I'm helping out at a coding boot camp for for women. So all this week, I have I have been amongst other people in the same room as me in somewhere other than my house. Um, so this week I've been helping to, to teach a group of 19 women uh, HTML, CSS, uh, an introduction to Python, and I'm helping out uh, some of the other mentors as we go through and teach them a, a few more coding skills. Sorry, just turning my phone on to silent after that rude interruption. My apologies. Um, hello, my name is Leon Tribe. Um, I'm a business applications MVP uh, and I am not a coder. In my dim dark past, mm -hmm. I used to code um, in Fortran 90, for those that remember that, uh, which is excellent if you're modeling physics with complex numbers, uh, but completely useless in the real world. Um, also dabbled in C before it got pluses or sharps attached to it. Uh, but that was a long, long time ago. These days I'm a configuration person. Uh, and yes, work with business applications. For those that are unfamiliar with what business applications is, um, that is uh, Dynamics, uh, the mod Dynamics modules, things like sales, etc. It is the Power Platform, and and what but this uh, in my head there's a third component. I'm thinking what what is the third component? What is that? It's just Dynamics and the Power Platform these days. Third component of what? That's it, isn't it? But business applications. It's, it's the Dynamics modules. Oh, it's an, and DataFlex Pro, right? DataFlex Pro is the <laughs> is, is the big one. That's why it's gone out of my head because it's more than <laughs> All right, so it's 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 yeah, it's it's, it's this sort of um, rapid tools for creating business applications in a low code, no code environment. I'm also the co-organizer of this group with Elena. Uh, so I, yeah, I do fun stuff like this. Um, and yeah, like Amy, also an MVP. And I gave myself a spider instead of a, a nice picture of a quokka for reasons that will become soon soon apparent. Uh, so I'll, so how did this come for me? So this is this is my story, and and you can see me, you can see where the arrow is. That was me at uh, Microsoft Ignite in February 2020 when Amy was on stage, and she, Amy presented on her quokka bot, uh, which which I expect she'll talk about momentarily. And, and she showed how with code, she had created this excellent thing called a Quokkabot, which I won't talk too much about because that's kind of the presentation. Uh, and, and it inspired me because I thought, well, OK, the pieces she's put together, I could possibly I could probably use the Power Platform and build something similar. And uh, so I went up to Amy afterwards, say, have, have you considered Power Platform? She said, no, 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 I, I, I do real stuff. I do code. It's, it's not, I don't do Power Platform. And I went, OK, well, I'll, I'll give it a go then. Uh, and that's, that's the story of how my no-code version of what Amy created uh, came about. I, is there a story behind where the Quokkabot came from, Amy? So I, I've never heard the story, if there is one. Um, well, obviously you weren't listening because I did uh, give the story at the start Ooh, of my talk. Ouch, okay. <laughs> I also noticed, yeah, a few of the photos um, you, you've got on there were from before the talk actually started because I do recall that room was absolutely packed out and there were no free seats available um, once the session started. Uh, so Quokkabot, 
Yes. Um, Crocobot originally came from, I got the chance to do a quick demo at Twilio Superclass when that was in Sydney last year, you know, back when we were allowed in person, like in the same room um, in cities other than the ones we live in. Uh, and I, I had to do a quick 10 minute demo, demoing one of their communications APIs. And I had a thought about it and I wanted to showcase some of what WA and Perth has. So I built a WhatsApp bot, which is one of the Twilio communication APIs. I built a WhatsApp bot that would send you a picture of a clocker if you asked for it. Uh, so it used some very advanced AI where it did a regex against the message you sent it. And if that contained the word quokka, it would send you a picture of a quokka. And if not, it would send you a picture of my dog. Um, and then chatting with a couple of my friends afterwards, they said, well, have you thought about putting some machine learning in and actually doing uh, image recognition? And I had never done anything like that before and had no idea what to do, but I chatted with a bunch of people and uh, eventually uh, found a really good image classification service to do that and linked it in. So it will, will still, it, the bot will still send you a picture of a quokka if you ask for one but you can also now send it a, a photo and it will detect whether or not there is a quokker in the photo. Well, whether or not it thinks there's a quokker in a photo, um, it's fairly accurate, but not always right. There we go. And so this generated two bots. We got the, the coded quokka bot, which Amy created. And then I, I didn't want to use quokkas because I'm, I'm from Sydney. I'm, the, I'm on the east side of the, of the country and we, we don't have quokkas. Quokkas are um, unique to, to the Rottnest Island, as, as I understand it. Uh, but we do have redbacks. And so I, I created a redback. Now, red, strictly speaking, redbacks are all over Australia. But um, I, I just picked the redback because it's kind of the completely, the furthest thing from a quokka I could think of. I, I just like that idea of... Um, uh, he just tried spot. to be very unpleasant. <laughs> that's, 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 it comes naturally to me, what can I say? Uh, but yes, that's uh, so I created the, the, the codeless spider bot. Which, which does a little bit of what Amy's saying, and we'll, we'll sort of talk about it. But um, yeah, mine um, uses that image recognition engine. And so what, what does solution do? So I, I can give a, a brief introduction of what, what mine does, um, which is exactly exactly what I've just said. So in, in my case, I, I don't use Twilio, I use Twitter. And so if someone anywhere in the world can um, put in a, if they tweet a picture, and apologies to the arachnophobes in the audience, because obviously these are, quite strong pictures of spiders. Uh, but if you tweet an image of a spider with the hashtag, is it a redback? Uh, and you can do this now, it's live. This is a live service that I've just got running passively for, for giggles. Uh, then it will hit the um, hit the image recognition and come back with a reply. And so it'll, um, in good strine, it'll say crikey, or it'll say yeah, nah, depending on whether it's a, um, a, spy, a redback or not. And then that's, that's what my solution does. Um, and Amy, uh, you, you've described it. Do you, do you want to um, talk more about what, what it does? Yes, yes. So um, my my Quokkabot, it's currently got the, the two different functionalities. So one is requesting a picture of a quokka, which we can see in the screenshot. So I ask, can I have a quokka? And it will send me a picture and says, this is a quokka. Uh, I can also uh, send in a photo from um, one that I've taken myself. So I can send in a photo and it will test it against the image classification and it will let me know if it, there's a quokka in the photo and it will then also let us know the results um, and the, the accuracy. So how confident it is that it's right. Yeah, no, I, I didn't do that, that first part because I don't think anyone would ever ask for a picture of a redback spider. I think that's that's going to be on the agenda. For any, but in principle, I could. In principle, I could do that bit codelessly. But I I, I never did that bit. It was the I, I was intrigued by just how how powerful or not powerful the image recognition capabilities were. Yeah, like there's access. probably less of a call to request a picture of a redback. Redback spider. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. We everyone loves a quokka. That's a, that makes more sense. Um, and it's very impressive. All right, for, for those who have seen the SKCD five years ago, literally we could not do this stuff in any easy way. Um, and literally in five years, we can now recognize pretty much anything. Um, 
yes, I don't have that XKCD cartoon, but uh, that, that, that was the point of it, that uh, you could geolocate very easily where someone was five years ago, but if you wanted to give an image to a computer and ask it, is this a bird, that would take obscene amounts of coding and thinking to, to achieve, and now it's it's a very simple exercise. Literally, you can do it codelessly, um, but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. How does your application receive input? So I use Twitter. Uh, if I wanted to add other channels and I wanted to do that codelessly, I'm confined to the channels or the, what they call the connectors available in Power Automate. Uh, but that's not a massive restriction um, in that there's about, what, 200, 300 of those now? So there's, there's a lot of connections. There isn't one for WhatsApp. I think you use WhatsApp as well. Do, you, do I remember that right? You used WhatsApp in the presentation? Yes, I use WhatsApp for mine. Yes. So, um, so there isn't, there is not still, there's yet, I'll, I'll try and use English. Um, there is not yet a WhatsApp connector for Power Automate, unfortunately. But there is email, so you can use email, you can use Twitter, and there's there's various others. Uh, but that's how you add them. You add them as connectors uh, to the Power Automate. We'll, we'll look at the Power Automate a little bit in, in a little bit. Um, how about you, Amy? Yeah. Uh, so, yes, as you said, uh, so mine uh, primarily and at the start, it started off with WhatsApp. So you would send uh, a either a photo or a request to a specific WhatsApp number. Uh, I, I even managed to get a dedicated WhatsApp number for, for Crocobot. Um, so it's just for Crocobot. So you can send in a, a message via WhatsApp. Uh, but I also expanded it so that it also allows you to email in as well. So you can do the same functionality, requesting a picture or, or sending in a picture and getting the results back via email. So adding other channels uh, really depends on the different API. Uh, so I had actually originally wanted to just do this via SMS but I'm uh, limited that uh, in Australia, the Twilio SMS numbers do not support MMSs, um, so which is why I use WhatsApp. But if I was doing this in the US, I could use SMS for that one. Um, I, look, I'm really just restricted by what APIs I can access um, and I haven't done an actual count, but I have a feeling there'd probably be close to 200 communication APIs out there as well, at least, oh, that I could more. integrate with this. Yeah, probably yeah. multiply that by a factor or two. <laughs> getting close to it, I'd, I'd say that, yeah, it's, it's, it's essentially yeah. everything's got an API these probably, days. Probably so. at least 210 options. Um, sure. So, 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 so right now it's just down to, um, yeah, whether or not they've got public access to the API, how how easy it is for me to use, um, and, and also whether or not they want me to pay for it. Um, so because this is something I do on the side, so I'm, I'm more trying to, to work with APIs that aren't going to cost me $50 a month to be able to do this. No, uh, but, but we're, there wouldn't be a Power Automate connector without an underlying API regardless. So certainly yeah. if you're doing it codelessly, you're working with a subset of all the APIs that would be available to you as a coder, uh, without yeah. a doubt. Um, so yeah, so, so if there's an exotic API you need to connect to and there's not a connector, then you know, definitely you can do it down it the code might, path. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, okay, what's the AI engine? So we've, we've yeah, touched on this idea that there's some kind of magical engine uh, that's that's doing the heavy lifting. And, and for me, it's the Azure Cognitive Services. So this is a an engine which is available. It's not difficult to use at all. Um, the, the only difficult part I found was getting the IDs, like configuring the IDs, um, which Elena helped me with, thankfully, when I was setting it up. And that, that's just a case of getting the fields within the Power Automate and putting in the, the, the right IDs to make it link up uh, to the Azure services so it knows what, what thing to look at. Uh, and then there's various, there's various components here that you can have it recognizing, um, you know, d doing things with speech, so you can have it translate, uh, things like, oh, sorry, that's language. Um, uh, speech you can do like speech to text uh, vision which is the one obviously i'm using uh, which is you can have it look at an image and bring back things like hashtags for the image so you can say this is a person this person is a male this person is 45 years old that kind of thing um, or you can do what um, i did which was train it with a bunch of spider pictures to say these are redbacks these are not redbacks and you only need about 20 20 images of each to give it a reasonable idea to get a, a reasonable level of accuracy. 
And, and what's nice is if you get a false positive, and I did get a couple of false positives, then you can use those. It, it basically keeps keeps it in the back end. And you can say, here's a this image is actually not a red back, and then you can retrain the model and it'll it'll improve. So it's very easy to improve. Um, I, I don't want to say too much about it because of this reason, that as far as I know, Amy used the same AI engine. So, so I don't want to steer, I don't want to have nothing left for you to say, Amy. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. That's OK. Um, yeah, so I also use Microsoft uh, Cognitive Services. Uh, I use their, their custom vision uh, because it did really good image classification. It was super easy to use, and um, they've got an API to use it. Um, as as Leon's already said, uh, cognitive services have a bunch of different APIs for a bunch of different things. Um, I actually just realized I've, I've used quite a few of them now. So as, as well as this, I've also uh, used their one of their language APIs uh, to do uh, translation. And I also used uh, one of their APIs to recognize handwriting and text on a page. Uh, so but custom vision does image classification. So it applies tags to images based on the, the training images that you provided to it. Uh, so mine was fairly simple with that one. Uh, I gave it a bunch of photos and said these are quokkas, and then I gave it a bunch of other photos and said these are not quokkas. So I just have two tags, which is quokka or negative. Um, that one's super easy to use, and yeah, it's got two APIs available. Um, the one that I'm using is the prediction API, so that tests it against the model that I trained. Yes, um, and yeah, I use the same API, but I used it as a connector. So in, yeah. in Power Automate, there's a um, vision connector, and you just yeah use that, and that's where you put all these strange little IDs in, and then it, it, it uses it, uh, which is good. And similar to Amy, I had a red back and not a red back classification model. Um, I had one interesting. I think you had some with, with marsupials, but I, I, I had one interesting false positive, which was someone admitted a black widow spider and it oh. thought it was a red back. And it turned, I didn't know this at the time, but I, I, I looked it up. Finally, the black widow is a relative of the red back. So it was smart for the AI to recognize it because it wasn't looking for the red back. It was, it was obviously looking at other aspects of that spider, which, which made it look like the red back. But yeah. once I trained it against the black widow and said, no, 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 black widow, you know, not, not a red back. Then it, then it was fine, but it was interesting. But you, you had a similar thing with marsupials, I think. You were, you yeah. Were so I did pay um, attention to some of your presentation, really, <laughs> where I remember there was some about marsupials. Yeah, so there's, um, there's, there's quite a few Australian animals which it does get a little bit confused by. Um, so sort of things like wallabies and kangaroos. Um, I got a little bit confused by wombats at the start, uh, but someone, someone actually used uh, who had a bunch of wombat photos they submitted them all, uh, so was able to train them. And so now it knows that wombats aren't quokkas. So there's there's still a few little ones in there, but uh, it's, it's doing it's doing pretty good. And it was actually not too bad because the first few times I presented it, of course, the first thing people try to do is they try and trick it. So all of those little edge cases where it could go either way, they were sent in as training images. Um, they, like they were sent in to try and trick them up, and I could then use them to retrain the, the AI, so that was that was super useful. Everyone trying to mess with it actually made it um, made it smarter and and better. Yeah, yeah. Um, people were putting in. I think you got to say like socks with quokkas on, or I got socks with spiders on, and things like this. And and then you get to decide, right? You get to decide whether well, do you consider that a quokka or not a quokka, and or not a spider, or is a spider. Yeah, and there's so some. So yeah. in in Perth, we actually have uh, a um, a newspaper like for for selling for selling stuff like the classifieds, um, which is called the Quokka, and and so someone <laughs> someone sent that in, <laughs> and they were like, "Well, technically it's right." I went, "Yeah, no, no that's not yeah, what we're talking about." Yeah, you get to decide, right? which is good. Um, how do I pass the input? So I mentioned I use Power Automate. Uh, I've got the the flow, for want of a better phrase, here. Uh, on two slides because it was a bit too small otherwise. Uh, so when a new tweet is posted, so literally if you haven't played with Power Automate, it's, it's, it's this easy, right? So the first one is your trigger, uh, is your trigger step. Uh, and so it's when a new tweet is posted with a hashtag, is it a red back? And literally that's all you do. You sort of just, just add it in and put in that as the field and then, the, then that trigger's done. Um, and then apply to each, so it loops through any images um, found on those tweets 
and it pushes it towards a classification engine. You have to train the classification engine. I haven't talked about that in here. Um, but yeah, I've got my blog at the end uh, where uh, you can go to my blog and you can see where I've got all the screenshots of how I trained it, et cetera. So if you want to see the training, there's the I, one of the IDs that you had to give it to. It knew where to go. And then once you've passed those images to the image URL, then back come predictions. And so if the prediction is equal to red back as opposed to not red back, and if the prediction is greater than 0 0.5, then post a tweet one way, and if not, then post a tweet the other way. And that's the yeah, nah, and the crikey uh, tweets. And, and that's it. That's that's the flow that sort of manages it all. And it just passively sits there and, and uh, waits for hashtags. Yeah, so I, um, I, as you may assume, I use code <laughs> to... To, to pass an input to the API, uh, to the AI. So, so when somebody sends a message to the WhatsApp number, it's set up in Twilio to, it fires a webhook to my API, which is uh, running on Azure Functions. So it triggers my Azure Function. From that, it has a look at, first of all, it has a look to see if somebody sent in an image. If so, it sends it through to the Custom Vision API and they get the results back. Uh, if someone sends through a message, it then has a look at what the text is and um, and whether or not it thinks that somebody is is asking for a quokka. Uh, so it um, all all run through my serverless function, serverless Azure function. And yeah, I guess I'm, I'm trying to think of advantages, disadvantages. Obviously, I'm limited to the steps and the structures of Power Automate, whereas with code, obviously you've got a lot more flexibility in what you do with the input, I guess. So that'll probably be the big difference here. Um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's I all mean, I mean I'm, I'm really limited to what I can do with JavaScript and we all know that JavaScript can do anything, so. Sure, that's right. it's almost as good as C, that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's right. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's probably the big difference. Um, in terms of future plans, um, one is probably hook it up to email. So there's there's various email hooks available, uh, or you know I should say connectors because we're having confused terminology. Uh, there's various connectors available to allow for email accounts, whether it's a Gmail account, whether it's an Office 365 account, um, Outlook.com, so on and so forth. There's a whole bunch of ways you can connect email to your flows uh, or to your Power Automate, whatever they call these days things. Uh, the other thing which I'm keen to try to make this somewhat practical, because at the moment it's just a bit of sort of you know fun and giggles with spiders, uh, but there's no reason why I couldn't connect it up, uh, train it with more animals, right? So I, I could get the Australian deadliest animals, uh, which which Redback doesn't make it. Redback, although Redback's a venomous spider, it, it doesn't make it. it the the Citadel Funnel web's on there, and and for a few other bits and pieces. So, but I could train it on these, uh, probably not the Irukandji. Irukandji's a bit small. Um, we'll just look at the Irukandji there. That's only I think it's something like half a centimeter in size and gives people heart attacks. But uh, for most of the others, I, I could train it. Then some, so someone could um, e probably email would be the most practical. But they could email uh, saying, "Is this, you know, is this going to kill me?" Uh, Great white shark should be should be pretty obvious, but some of the others may not. And uh, then it will reply back and say, "Yes, yes, tourist, uh, this will kill you." Or no, no, don't worry about it. So it's, I'm, I'm toying with that idea that you know, maybe I'll do something like that. Um, that's that's kind of the future plans at this point. Um, and maybe put in a it. So if people request a redback spider, I can give them a redback spider picture. Maybe I'll I'll put that in as well, just for just for fun. Amy. Uh, yes. So I, I have a few plans. Um, as you may be able to tell from the picture on the slide, uh, I am planning to put this on Twitter uh, to to allow people to to tweet. Is this a quokka? Uh, so looking at doing that, um, I am, so I started building in uh, error reporting. So it's now able to, so I believe it, it looks for the word um, error issue or wrong and then sends me a message to let me know that somebody's reported an error so that I can have a look to see, um, to see and retrain the, the prediction to make sure that it's right. I would like to build it in where if somebody reports an error, it can actually rerun the image through through the training API to automatically retrain it, uh, rather than me having to do it. So I want to I want to give that a go. 
Uh, the the other thing I want to do as well is to so I, I'm now I'm now amassing a collection of Quokka photos as part of this, uh, and so I'd like to actually be saving these somewhere. So the moment when it sends a picture of a Quokka, there's a selection of twelve pictures that it sends from, and it will randomly uh, randomly pick a picture each time. So I'd like to be able to take the Quokka photos that I get and actually save them to to sort of uh, increase the number of photo options that I have to send people pictures of clockers rather than just 12 that I, I found myself. Awesome. And I think that I think that's it. I think this presentation, I guess, in, in terms of conclusion, um, from a no code perspective, you can sort of do the similar things at a basic level, right? So yeah, if you if you're just looking for sort of the the essential. You want to take an image in, in this case, run it through an API and give a response back. That's certainly possible. If you want to extend it, there's some capability to extend. There's some ability, there's some flexibility within the system. Um, but ultimately, I, I guess the way I see it is if, if you need complete flexibility, if, you, if you've got exotic APIs, and by exotic I mean not in Power Automate, which is most of them, uh, then then obviously you're going to have to go to code. The, the nice thing, and this is where the, the no-code, low-code, code, pro code comes in, is the fact that Power Automate can be devolved to a code level, right? You can go to a sort of a logic app to run it on your own tin and you can um, you can build your own custom connector. So there's an ability to migrate to the code option if you want to. So um, yeah, so I, I guess for me, from a, from a, a project perspective, it, it's, it's a use, I'm not gonna send myself necessarily down a rabbit hole or down a cul-de-sac if I start with Power Automate, that's, that's why. I like it, and then I can hand it over to a developer, and they can do a real job on it, rather than sort of my um, configury, you know, basic job. I, I, I don't know. Is that a, is, what do you think, Abby? Is that a is that a fair approximation of the truth, or, or do you do you feel there's no value to power automate? Maybe that's a bit too strong. Look, I think that um, I I. Well, first off, I feel like you're painting me in a very negative light. Oh, like this. sorry, I apologize. No, no, I, that's, <laughs> not my, that's not my aim at all. I apologize. No. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I like working with code because I like the, the customizability. Um, it, it, I like the flexibility to do it the way I want. Um, I, I like to work that way, you know, apart from the fact that it makes me feel cool to, you know, sit there with my three screens and code projected on my face and my, my black hoodie. Um, <laughs> I, I like the flexibility to get to do that. Um, but, but also, yeah, the, the, the no code options, it, it, it's really easy to get started with. So I think particularly for things like fleshing out ideas of what you want to do, being able to quickly throw together a no code alternative, which you may down the track realize that, okay, now, now I need something a bit more powerful and you can move it away, but you've got all that processes in place. Um, yeah. So I think the, the no code option definitely makes it more accessible and is really good for putting together um, MVPs and and things like that, but yeah, I'm a bit. I like doing stuff in code, um, particularly because I feel like the more I do, I've found just the 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 more it gets easier. Even just trying out uh, a new accounting system last week, and they don't have an option to upload uh, a CSV export of um, existing customers, but because I've been doing all this work with with APIs and dealing things. It, it took me half an hour and um, accessing their API, I'd already put together a script to take the CSV I had and to update them all via the API. So just I've found, yeah, the more I do it, the the, the easier it's gotten for me to use to use the code alternative. And that's probably a great example of where Power Automate would be probably useless, frankly, um, or next to useless because Why? you're going against an API without a connector. Yeah, well, you, you can use a custom connector, right? If you know yeah, what yeah, you're cool. doing, right? Yeah, but but it, um, I'm I'm trying to be gracious here and and, and try and <laughs> sort of not make Amy feel like I'm trying to stick with market. So uh, not at all, no. Uh, but no, there's there's plenty of business business um, cases where uh, code is the obvious first choice. You don't need to start with the with the Duplo tools and then eventually get to 
so the Lego techniques, you can you can just go straight to the straight to the complicated stuff because it, it just makes sense. And, and so what you just described it's a perfect example where you wouldn't necessarily go with power automate at all. If if it's um, linking to something where you've got a connector, then yeah, maybe as a as you say an MVP, you'd start there. And as um, especially in an agile project, right, as the things get more um, mature and things evolve, then maybe you, you, you then um, keep going down power automate until it makes no more sense, and then go to code. But if it, you already have a a complex or, or something which isn't going to fit sort of the basic framework of Power Automate from the box, and absolutely, you'd go to code straight away. And I, I, I completely agree with that. No point otherwise, especially if it's half an hour, then it's it's really easy, right? It's a really easy fix. And yeah. again, it's it's very extendable. And there's um, and I the the other big difference is DevOps is still sort of being worked out in the Power Automate world. That's not as mature as it could be. Whereas if you've got um if you're in a a, a project and you um, and there's a sort of strong DevOps component, then obviously .NET um, coding or you know, you know coding lends itself to that uh, a lot better um, in, in terms of management of the code and, and progression of the code. Yeah. Excellent. Hopefully, I've backpedaled out of that. <laughs> well, no. Uh, these these are our details. So um, yeah, as I mentioned, I've got the blog there. That CRM blog. Uh, dot com where if you're interested in dabbling in the world of power automate i've got uh, screenshots of some examples there i've got a, a twitter bot uh, which automatically looks for the hashtag uh, dynamics ms dynamics crm and then hashtags the one with the most retweets uh, so you can see how i put that together in rubbish <laughs> <laughs> It's still running. I, you know, people like stuff sometimes. Uh, I've got another one where I'm pulling data out of a Mongo DB database um, and using that for analysis, uh, which which is very useful for me. And then, yeah, obviously, I've got this one with the with the spiders. Uh, so yes, that's 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 my blog. And then, uh, Amy, you, your details there as well. Yep. Yep. So I um I did. <sighs> It did bug me a little bit when I when I saw your slides because I was like, my website isn't WordPress. Is it? <laughs> no, no. So, oh, so my, she, she's yeah. a website just, web, 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 web design and web web dev guru. She I did yeah. send you these I've slides seen, quite a while ago. I've you seen Amy's website. It's amazing. You're just like I was so depressed. <laughs> but the, Amy, you are the reason my blog looks awful but less like less less awful than it used to because i've got so inspired it's 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 like you're looking at this oh, oh my gosh it's so beautiful like and um, yeah. so i actually stole uh most of the design aspects from my website from other people's don't websites don't tell uh, but i am currently in the process of i have hired a designer who is far more talented than me so hopefully in the next few months all of my stuff is going to um, be rebuilt and be much nicer um so yes uh there's a link to my personal website which uh sort of links through to everything i do i was struggling to sort of find one place to send people because i do a lot of different things uh so that kind of incorporates all of it um uh there's my linkedin as well but i'm not super active on there and and then also i'm much more active on twitter uh and if you um if you have a look at my github that's where uh the the cocklebots on there as well as pretty much everything else i do because i i can't be asked making my repositories private uh so you are free to go through and pick through all of the code that i've ever written uh, and have a look at my beautiful commit messages of yes, but now it works. Okay, now I fixed it, um, and uh, continually throughout the the GitHub repos. So yeah, this way you can find me on the internet. That's cool. cool. Uh, there's anyone has any questions, Daryl or Sai? Anyone? I actually want to make a comment on the code part, which I. So any, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe you just showed the small piece, but I was expecting much more code, really, to be, you know, like um, to, to to initiate the connection to the service, send pictures and back. So I haven't seen the full code, but it, it, it seems to be very straightforward, very simple, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. So it's so it's pretty simple. Um, if you um, actually, hang on, I can chuck this in the chat um i can i can check this in the chat so i've got a on my blog i have a um if i can find my blog on on my blog 
actually not even on my blog i put this so it's easy to find i totally know what i'm doing um so i i actually i've got your web... blog on my screen yeah. it's not gonna hop though um <laughs> Uh, this I okay, so I've, just, chat. I, I've just chucked a link in chat. Um, so I actually built, a, as with all good web developers, I built a website for Quackabot, um, which which goes to a little bit of information about Quackabot. Uh, and it also includes, um, so I've been gradually going through and writing blog posts about um, as I've been building it. Um, I'm, I'm a few posts behind though. Um, so uh, I believe I've got three blog posts on there. Um, the the first one was just building the the bot functionality, so sending, um, requesting, and then sending an image. Uh, but the second blog post was was when um, we added the the image recognition to it. So that's got the full code in there and sort of goes through uh, each of the steps and how it all does, and then uh -huh. also links through to the repository where the full lot of code there is. Um, so yeah, it's it's not too bad. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I also yeah I also will comment on the code because yeah I, I didn't realize you use Azure functions so I was just like oh Amy probably should go for this Azure. Are you did you apply to serverless days? Um, I think the the for submissions till. Uh, mid August something. I have not. Um, it didn't no. pop up, so I may end up doing it uh, eventually. But yeah, I've just been holding off. I've um, I've I've lost count of how many online events and conferences I've spoken at this year. Oh, so it's just like I should probably take a bit of a break. Um, so but yeah, I might look at it a bit later on because, uh, yeah, I have submitted to a few serverless things. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I would just. Thinking, I think it's a global serverless, and uh, I thought it's just to boost the numbers of girls in a serverless. So we're probably going to be a boys club in there. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. Taya, do you want to say something? Did you you you, you unmuted yourself? Oh, Daryl. <laughs> I put my hand up. Um, <laughs> so what what is the latency like getting results back from? from the service? Um, so it's a couple of seconds. It really depends on how much is going on. Uh, the email option uh, definitely has much more latency. Um, the WhatsApp version is pretty good, but if it hasn't been used in a while, it does sometimes go to sleep. So I'm just sending a message now. Um, so send a message to WhatsApp. Um, and see how long it takes me to get a response back. This is another question I wanted to check, um, but uh, yeah, because I realized that you mentioned you don't like paying and to run yeah. something mm. substantial for Azure Functions. Okay, so, and I've to... just got a response back um, from that. And if I send through a picture, um, okay. Um, and I've got a response back straight away. Um, so it's fairly instantaneously once it once it's mm -hmm. been going. Uh, but yeah, sort of the first one in a while, it's a bit slower. Okay. Um, so, but it's it's all sort of fairly responsive, like within thirty seconds. Um, if there's no response within that long, um, it's either I'm trying to get two hundred people in an audience to do it all at once without having done any load testing prior to that. Um, or or something's broken. Is that your experience too, Leo? So, so I've got a, a, a secondary problem, uh, and again, this is one of the one of the differences, I guess, with the approaches uh, with the Power Automate with that trigger where it's monitoring the hashtag. You're beholden to its sort of its cycle of, of looking for that hashtag. Right. Uh, Calling. Generally, it's it's normally pretty friendly. Normally, it, it's sort of within five minutes, it'll give a response. It's not instantaneous. So it's not instantly, it's not sort of pinging the Twitter sphere every every couple of seconds. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I can't remember now how long it would take. It, certainly no more than half an hour, but uh, I think from memory there, the, generally it was sort of within five minutes it would give her a, a response. So I think from memory it was it was pinging the Twitter sphere every every five minutes um, for, 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 for the hashtag. Certainly the, the power automate is very well documented, so we'll talk about those kinds of uh, those kinds of latencies and how often it, it sort of um, it polls the service and things like that. 
Uh, so you can certainly, certainly look in there and, and see it. Uh, but yeah, it's, right. it's 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 not it's not within seconds certainly. Sure. So so if if it's a life and death question, you Leon, you <laughs> you lose, you lose. Should I run away? Yeah, that's right. Or not <laughs> wait half an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Look, well, yeah, that be a better option. <laughs> Look at this. Someone's beaten me. Is it a spider? Is it a redback? No, die. Thirty yeah. minutes. <laughs> that's because again, and it's because I'm cheap on the on the power of my <laughs> service that I'm running. Right, I'm I'm, I'm running on the free plan. Uh, no, I no, think... wait, wait, of course. Wait a second, yeah. Leon, because what you said applies to the trigger itself. So basically, how often the component checks the Twitter yeah. port. It, it doesn't improve it. Trigger, yeah, the, the, the flow itself should still work within the, the second. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the it's, trigger, it's, it's within the second. It's beholden with the trigger. I, 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 that may improve with different flow plans. I, I, I can't remember. There, there may be. You just, you just go and pay for the license for the proper flow, Leon, and it, it huh. will magically fix everything. Or logic apps. That's, right. That's right. And uh, yeah, and I say I, I just keep misstepping. Apologies, Amy, for the for the WordPress. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you had these slides like three four days ago. You could have told me I'd have been happy to. Well, it, okay. it 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 wasn't it wasn't to, like I I I just took it as you were you were using that icon to to sort of showcase that there were that there was a website, not just that it was WordPress. Yeah, well, no, yeah, no, I, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all good. Um, and um, yeah. how, what kind of accuracy do, have you got in your experience? So if you're putting a, I think you mentioned putting a funnel web and it came back negative, but a black widow was positive. Have you done any more like experimentation with that? Yeah. So people, when I've presented this, um, people have, have sort of tried images and it, it's pretty impressive it's pretty it's pretty cool. even with yeah. only like 20 images you, you train it and it takes a few minutes to train so there's a lot of a lot of black magic happening in the back end um but it's it's even with 20 images 20 good images 20 you know, really? bad, you know 20 positive 20 negative so 20 redback spiders 20 not redback spiders mm -hmm. um it's pretty good it, it's uh, i've only had one or two false positives so it's it's, it's pretty impressive um, we're using the same service, but I, I, I'm guessing it's um, similar for you, Amy. I, you, I imagine initially you gave it, what, like 20, 30 images or something and just let it rip, and then with the conferences, as you're saying, they, it sort of tweaked it. But it, normally it's pretty good in my experience. It's yeah, like nine, so, nine out of ten times kind of. Yeah, so I, I've been pretty lucky. Like we've had very, very few, um, very few negative results um, for, for mine. Um, and in fact, often I think most of most of the false results that I've had have been from trickier things. So things like um, illustrations of quokkas or a stuffed quokka toy and, and things like that, where it's kind of it's not technically a quokka, but I'm trying to train it to recognise it anyway. What about other similar animals like a, a wallaby or something like that? Yeah, so it must be. I, I don't know. I think so. I, I think it's definitely picking up the smile. Uh, so it didn't really, it didn't really like, unless it's a really quokka looking wallaby, uh, we haven't had any of them. Um, yeah, I, I think it must be the smile because I got, I got a picture of one of my friends. She's got this great big crazy grin on her face, very quokka like <laughs> grin. Um, and it was only 87% sure that she wasn't a quokka. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that's, I think that's why it's the smile, like, um, it's, it's picking up that. Um, but, but yeah, so I've, I've had a ridiculous, um, like I, I understand that machine learning is not normally this accurate straight up. Um, yeah, it, it's been pretty impressive. I think we've been looking at sort of like 98% accuracy. Mm. What about from different angles, like, like a profile versus a, a front on angle? How, how does it handle that? Yeah, so I, I already had a few of those options when training. Um, so I had a few of to the side and, and front on and um, profile. So um, it was already trained against a few of those different options. Okay. Yeah, I, I used images with multiple redbacks in it, um, redbacks from different angles. Um, yeah, the, 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 the frightening thing, if you go to – so I remember I went to – uh, what is it, Ignite? The, 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 yeah, that, that one where, where you were, Amy. I, I, I was sitting in on some of the AI sessions and the, you had the machine learning people there and they're saying, we don't know what it's recognizing. You, you, train, huh. you train it and it's going through these multiple points of sort of weighted 
uh, recognition of it. Yes, it's more like, you know, in the case of Redback, it says, yes, that's more Redback than not Redback. And, and it sort of goes through these gates of um, probability. But what each of those gates is looking at, they don't know. They're, they're saying it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, essentially it's a black, black box. It's a black box with multiple wow. sort of gateways of, of assessing whether it is or it isn't. Now, whether it's, you know, one of them might be looking at legs, another one might be looking at colors, and, but they don't know. They really don't know. So, because, um, yeah, to, to us as humans, it's obvious. You'd look at a red back spider, you look for the red back. Right, if it's got a big red stripe down the back, but clearly, yeah, the AI doesn't think that way. Because when it looked at the, at the the Black Widow, you know, they, it's the, it's the same spider, except without the red stripe. It's oh, that's a red back. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it's um, it's it's quite inst it's quite interesting that yeah, we, we we actually don't know what it's looking at when when it's when it's doing the recognition, but it's really good at it. Uh, from a business, I guess yeah, from a business perspective, where I see this could be useful is things like. Um, uh, receiving documents, so like ID documents, something like that. So if you need to receive someone's driver's license, then you could use this kind of technology to work out if it is a driver's license, if it is a New South Wales driver's license, or, we, or Victoria we did the or WA. We did, and we did. So yeah, for we did something similar in New South Wales, right? We did for the summit UG, um, mm. Daryl. Uh, was it last year or we, yeah, we was, did uh, uh, two years? It was yeah. It was a fo focus, not the summit UG, but we did this um, um, uh, drive license uh, recognition thing. Yeah. And then, and so the idea is, yeah, you could recognize the driver license. Once you've done that, you could then use that text service. So you could use the image service to, to confirm it's a driver license. Then you could do something like, say, the the image, the text service to extract the information out and then then create a file automatically with it or create a record, uh, either in a SharePoint list, in Excel, in um, in Dynamics, um, yeah. so you could do all that. Certainly with Power Automate, and of course, you could absolutely do it with code, uh, no question. Uh, so this, this is, the, you know, so it's fun and games playing with clockers and spiders, but there, there's some, there are some uh, real business applications that can be applied with this, and it's, it's, you know, deceptively simple to set up. Cool, thanks, guys. Elena's got a question. <laughs> I'm talking without raising my hand, but I decided for a change to try to, to click on the thing. So another thing just, just crossed my mind. I remember that uh, Power Automate didn't like um, the free um, tier of Azure Cognitive Services because we can use uh, something which basic and standard, I guess. Did you, for, for, for Amy, Amy, did you, did you, uh, did you use um, the free tier, or you used um, you used um, the standard one? Um, I have been using the free tier for that one. Uh, Leon, what about you? Because I remember that Flo didn't like the free. That is it still the case? What What did you do with cognitive services? Every time it said free plan, when when <laughs> I set it up in Azure, every time it said free plan, that's the one I went, I went for. I, I, um, so did the work. only place the only place where it's probably not a free plan is in Power Automate, mm. uh, because the free plan, and maybe this is what you maybe this is how I'm misunderstood, but yeah, in, in Power Automate, uh, the free plan doesn't seem to get you very far these days, unfortunately. Uh, so I think that one might be my MVP plan, which is slightly better than a than a free plan. Uh, mm. But certainly in terms of the AI services, uh, when I was provisioning with Azure, uh, none of that's costing any money. And it's not using any credit. No, I'm using all free plans for the AI stuff. The the other thing, uh, Amy, you said um, you had uh, lots of people in, in audience for for Ignite, and um, then they started sending you pictures. Did you have any issues with like basically the API calls? They uh, in like exceeding some limits or not really? Not that many. Uh, not not really. Um, not that I saw. Thank you. Ty, did, did you want to ask something? Oh, no, it's really cool. I just um, just did the QR code and been testing it. Uh, it recognized the rabbit as a quaker, 99.98%. <laughs> but um, I just typed in saying this is not a quaker, but it sent me another image of a quaker. Do you, do you intend to have a feature in there saying if somebody like um, say, oh, it's, this is not a quaker, then um, read that as a sentence and analyze it to say, oh, OK, um, you know, do something about that, or is it something that's easy to do? I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, so currently it recognizes error, issue, and wrong, 
correct and yeah. lets me know that there's a wrong result um but yeah i think i do need to add the specific phrase this is not a quokka yeah um because yeah so as soon as it recognizes the word quokka um it will it will then just send you a picture of a quokka <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you yeah did, did your rabbit smile on the on the picture was it a <laughs> smiley this rabbit I can send you a picture of this rabbit to chat, but um, it's actually Put in a, the chat. Put in the it, chat. It's my um, friend's rabbit. Um, it's got a little glass um, glass frame on top of it. Maybe yeah. that's why. <laughs> uh, I'm not to be, I did The thing is, I don't think we've had any rabbits be sent in. Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm not so, and they do look quite similar. So I'm not surprised that that happened. So I have to sit down and train it with some rabbits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty that's cool. cool. That's cool. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. It was awesome. Yeah, if there are no more questions, thank you very much. I'm stopping recording here and just...